Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm working on this Poulon Pro chainsaw. This one was sent to me by a subscriber and all I know about it is that it was in working condition. He lent it out to his brother-in-law 10 years ago and just recently got it back. And of course now it doesn't run. So hopefully it's just a fuel issue, but that's what we're gonna find out. So let me start by just doing the easy thing. We'll add a little bit of two-stroke fuel to the tank, pull it over, and see if it has any signs of life. Okay, we're off to a good start. It primed right up. So let's see what we get. Too bad. Let's uh, try it again. Not too bad. I didn't expect it to do anything, but it's running halfway decent. When starting it on full choke, it doesn't want to start. When you push it in, that's half choke, and it starts and runs fast. And as soon as you pull the trigger, it turns the half choke off. I can throttle the engine up, and it sounds good. But as soon as I let off the trigger, it goes to stall. So potentially, it is just a jetting issue, or maybe the carburetor needs to be rebuilt. I'm not sure yet. So I'm gonna get this top cover off. It'll get better access to the carburetor adjustments and we'll try tuning what's on there and see if we can get it to run properly. So it's kind of hard to see in here, but there's a few things I'm after. The adjustments for the carburetor are right here. And the one on the left is the low speed adjustment. That's the one I'm gonna start with. And it seems like it uses this tool here, the splined one, to make that adjustment. But before doing that, I am gonna adjust the idle set screw, which you can just get a glimpse of right there. I'm gonna bring the idle speed up so that the saw stays running. And then I'm gonna adjust the low speed jet. Find the point where the saw is running the fastest and then turn it counterclockwise to let more fuel in and settle the RPMs down a bit. And then I'm gonna try backing off the idle set and see if I can bring it down to a normal idle speed. All right, let's see if that's enough to keep it running so we can make the adjustment. Just bump the idle up a little more.
Well, this might be a quick video. The saw is now idling. So I'm gonna double check the speed that it's idling at. It should be somewhere between 2800 and 3400 RPM. But even so, I am concerned. I think there is an issue in that carburetor because when adjusting the low speed needle, there really wasn't a huge difference in the way the engine sounded. So I think something is clogged up and that carburetor should be cleaned up regardless of how it's running right now. I don't think it's right. So let's restart it. I'll just double check the speed and go from there. It's actually running a little slow. Should be at least 2,800 RPM. Yeah, I don't know about this one, but I am making a bit of a mess. So we know the oiler is working. You know, I guess my question is, do we have a carb issue or not? You know, the idle speed, it was on the low side. So I brought it up a bit and it seemed like it was doing better, but it is still stalling and it was running lean. So I opened up the jet a bit more and it sounded a lot more responsive this time when making that adjustment. So yeah, maybe... Just maybe I don't have to rebuild a carb for once. So I'm actually going to let this cool down without this cover on. There is no cooling for the head on the engine and it is getting pretty hot. So yeah, let's let it cool down. We'll try it a little more, but things are looking pretty good for this saw. I think I'm going to cut to the chase on this one. It's actually been a couple weeks. I got sidetracked with a few generators. The plan was to restart this, see if it runs any better, but... I think I'm going to skip that and jump right ahead to the carburetor because even after I made the adjustments that I made, it was still stalling. You know, I brought the RPMs up, I adjusted the jetting, and I let the engine warm up. And it just wouldn't idle very well. And even when it was idling, it was kind of bouncing around quite a bit. So, yeah, let's get this carb off. We'll get it rebuilt and then try it again.
I think we're just about there. There's a fuel line on the bottom right. And there's one on the left side as well. So let's get those off. Then I think this will slide right out. That was easy. So there's just two screws holding this plate on. And once these screws are out, that plate should just come right off. And then we're left with the body, the main body of the carburetor. Yeah, those are almost too loose. So behind here is the pump, pumps the fuel from the tank and the diaphragm is behind this one. So those are the parts that tend to get destroyed with ethanol fuel and over time they have to be replaced. So that's most likely causing the issue here. I mean, it could be junk in there as well, but I'm willing to bet ethanol in sitting is probably what is causing this issue. Interesting. This cover and the shape of this diaphragm don't quite match. You'd think it would be cut like this plate is, but it's not. Might be nothing. Potentially this was rebuilt and the wrong kit used, but it's not overly stiff. So it might have been rebuilt recently. Yeah, nothing terrible. It's pretty clean. So let's just double check what these jets were set at. And when I reassemble, I'm gonna put it back exactly how it was and see how it runs after it's been cleaned versus how it ran before. So this jet, we'll turn it in. One turn, almost two turns, maybe one and three quarters. One turn. About the same, almost two turns out, just a little bit less. This is the needle.
And we'll get the screen out too. Okay, and that's it. So let's go through this real quick before putting it in the ultrasonic, let it soak for a while and put it back together with a rebuild kit. Everything cleaned up pretty well. Not that it was that dirty to begin with. I think most of the dirt was just on the outside. So let's see if we get the right kit for this carburetor. Yeah, it looks like the right kit. These are all the old parts. I'm just gonna lay them out here on the right. But the new parts, they do seem to match. So I think we should be good to go. So I'm gonna start with the pump side. We'll get this screen installed first. Just gonna use a drill bit. To push it in. And let's see, we'll grab the gasket. And now for the needle. Actually looks pretty good. The arm, you have to double check it. Usually it should be about the same level as the mating surface here. And the one I pulled off, it was actually a little bit below. I know Zama does sell a tool to set it correctly. They're not all supposed to be exactly level. In this case, yeah, it has to come up just a touch, I think, but we're pretty close. Actually, it's a little too high. This gasket, it comes up above the level here on this plate. 
So I was checking it like this, thinking it was good, but when you actually check it on the surface, not including the gasket, it is actually a little bit high. So bring that down just a bit. Yeah, that should do it. This diaphragm, it almost looks like it can go either way. And technically it will, but there are some extra holes on this side and there's an extra hole right there, most likely for an, a pulse from the engine. So when I put it on like this, that lines up right there. So we'll do the same for this one. I should have mentioned this when taking these jets out. A lot of times they are different. And these look almost identical, but the one on the left has this extra ridge. So that one went there. And the other one right there. So I'm gonna turn these in and then bring them out just short of two turns. There's one, and almost two. Okay, those are both set back to where they were. And that should do it. Before I put the car back on, I'm going to clean up this cover in the ultrasonic. Because, yeah, it's pretty dirty. So we'll just clean things up a bit and put it back together, see how it does. Let's see if I remember how this goes. The fuel lines are actually in very good shape. So I'm going to leave good enough alone as far as those go. But let's get the carburetor reinstalled.
Try to get the choke lever back on. Might have been easier to do before installing the carburetor, but looks like it might go. There we go. So that was the throttle linkage. And these are the two wires here that ground out the coil when they're connected together. It's a pretty simple design. It's just a piece of metal here connected to the yellow wire. And when you move this in the right position, it essentially connects the yellow and the black wire and that kills the spark. Did something wrong with this switch here. Let's try it again. Perfect. Don't have a torque spec on this. I'm just trying to make the bolts even. I think 40 inch pounds is about the most I would do on something this small. Yeah, 30. Plenty. Just putting the cover back on, it's gonna make it a little harder to adjust, but I don't wanna overheat the engine, but it's only temporary. I did order a new plug and air filter, but it's gonna be a few days before I see those parts. So what do you think? Is it gonna run? I think it will, but even though I set the jetting back to the way that it was, I think it's going to have to be adjusted again because the carb, it's now clean and most likely it's going to run richer than it did before. But let's try starting it just like this and go from there.
Yeah, I get nothing from the saw. So I'm going to bump the idle up and turn the low speed jet in a quarter turn and try it again. Getting close. Gonna lean it out a little bit more and bring that idle up some. there. Okay, good. 
it's running pretty well now, has good trigger response, and more importantly, it's consistently idling. So I think we're just about there. So I'm gonna get this outside, we'll put it to work, and make sure. The chain, it is a bit worn. I think it does need to be replaced. I did put a new edge on the teeth, but the real test here is the engine. So let's get it started and see how it does. Unfortunately, this chain's in really bad shape. It needs to be replaced. It's struggling with this log, and I was hoping to cut something a little bit bigger. Anyway, I don't have a replacement for it, so I'm gonna continue on, just make a couple cuts here, but I think I do need to add a chain to the shopping list. Yeah, that was pretty bad. I didn't think I was gonna make it through that one cut, but the engine, it's running well. Definitely a new chain is needed. So I'm gonna order that up now. We'll just pause it. And when I get the chain, the air filter and the spark plug will finish it up and try a slightly bigger test. All the parts, they showed up today. So I'm gonna get the chain installed as well as swap out the spark plug and the filter. The chain I got is an 18 inch, 62 tooth, 3 8 low profile from Oregon. Yeah, chain looks to be the right one. And just to show you what I'm talking about as far as the wear goes, if you look at the tooth right there, this is the old chain and then the tooth on the new one. It's quite a big difference, and some of the teeth are even missing on the old chain. So definitely overdue. This one should make a big difference.
Huh. I didn't know these came with torch spark plugs. That could have been the problem the whole time. Anyway, I'm replacing it with an NGK. Ordered it off Amazon, so may not actually be one. But I did double check the gap and it's dead on. So we'll give this plug a try. All right, let's try it again. An interesting little side note here. I just spoke with the owner through email. He mailed this to me through the US mail and I told him I was waiting for the chain. He told me to check the box because he actually sent one and I did not dig through the box to find that. And he also sent a new bar. So yeah, I'm gonna pause it here. I'll get that new bar installed and I'll meet you outside. Not too bad. That was a cold start. The last time I ran this was a week ago. I didn't even have to prime the carburetor. It started right up, the engine's running well, and of course now it's cutting well. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.